Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. Thank you for attending Carolina Farm Stewardship Association's 36th Sustainable Agriculture Conference. This is the session Business Marketing Strategies in the Post-COVID Era, presented by Emily Wagner of Nextstar Media Inc. WNCT. Um, my, my name is Angie Lavezzo, and I am CFSA's Communications Coordinator, and I'll be the workshop host today. Uh, today's session sponsor is, is South Carolina SARE. Uh, please stop by their sponsor pages and learn more about their work and how they might be able to help you on your farm. We've got a quick, awesome commercial I'm going to play. Um, so I'd like to invite you to feel free to introduce yourself and put your questions throughout the workshop in the chat. Um, please rem remember our conference community agreements and keep them in mind when you engage in chat or participate in group discussions. All right. Well, with that, I will hand it over to Emily. Thanks, Emily, for joining us. And um, just let me know when you want to hear some of the poll results. Okay, perfect. Welcome everybody. Uh, I am excited to be back here uh, at this conference again. This is my third year uh, being here and I've enjoyed it every single time. Uh, so if you um, if you haven't already read the title Business Marketing Strategies in the COVID Era and Beyond, um, the purpose of this workshop is to uh, hopefully uh, stem some, you know, uh, I ideas, some conversation for you uh, so that you can take um, some of this information and apply it to your 2022 marketing, marketing strategy. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go to the next slide. So the first thing that we're going to do is start with a poll question. Um, if you haven't answered the poll question, we can give you a few seconds, uh, at least just the first one to begin with. And I know uh, that Angie will be able to see these results. So we have farmers markets, produce fresh, merchant wholesalers, livestock dealers, poultry farms, dairy food manufacturing. Um, uh, what business do you most identify with? The purpose for uh, this poll question specifically is because I do have a lot of uh, information in my workshop and I want to make sure that I tailor it to uh, our audience that we have today. Okay, so far it looks like we've got 28.6% uh, at the farm, at, at farm. oh, we're changing. 25% at farmer's markets, 12.5% um, produce fresh merchant wholesalers. 25% livestock dealers, and 37.5% a tantalizing other. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right, so today this workshop, uh, how is it going to be structured? What are we going to discuss? So uh, first we'll start off with an introduction, um, you know, about, we'll talk about me and uh, my background and then also, uh, you know, why uh, did I feel that this was a great uh, topic to cover and, you know, how we can look to move forward uh, throughout this pandemic. Um, and then uh, we will cover farmers markets, um, produce, fresh merchant wholesalers, livestock dealers, poultry farms, dairy food manufacturing. Um, and then within each of these categories, we will look at advertising and marketing. We're going to look at the broad uh, picture here of um, where uh, people have been, uh, businesses similar to yours have been, uh, you know, placing their interest in over the last two years. We'll also uh, talk a lot about target customers. 
Um, I believe that this is always an important uh, piece to a marketing strategy simply because, uh, you know, if we had um, the most robust marketing budget in the world, uh, yes, we could go target everybody. Um, but when we're looking at, you know, making sure that our budget is efficiently used, uh, we want to look at targeting people that are the most likely to convert, which of course would increase your ROI. And then, uh, the next uh, section down, we'll talk about opportunities, you know, um, things to be cautious of, ideas, uh, content um, ideas for, you know, the next year. And then last but not least, we will then at the end jump into um, advertising response. So where are some of these target groups? Uh, where are they um, reacting to ads on different platforms uh, in the digital realm? And of course, we'll have some poll questions, uh, you know, uh, throughout this workshop. And uh, if you have questions, just let me know, um, or I guess Angie can let me know and I'll make sure to ask throughout uh, the, uh, the workshop if um, we have any questions coming in. And also, Please don't mind if I have a little bit of a coughing fit. Uh, I am trying to get over a cold. And uh, so, yeah, hope you don't mind that. <laughs> I will try my best. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, I currently work as the digital marketing specialist uh, at WNCT. It is a local broadcast station in the Eastern North Carolina market. Um, most days I wake up and I ask myself how I got here because uh, I did go to uh, school and I got a bachelor's of science in veterinary science. Um, and then right after that, I went and worked for the USDA FSIS uh, inspecting poultry um, at primarily a Tyson plant. And then it, a few years later, I, uh, I joined Smithfield Foods and I ran a farrowing department for them for a few years. And uh, how all of that experience led me here, I'm not quite sure. Um, but what I have done is to make sure that I'm, I stay involved in the ag industry. Uh, it is important to me. I'm passionate about it. Um, and so now uh, at my job, that I currently have, I do have a lot of resources that uh, you know I had never had before on access to data and research. So my primary goal is to continue to be a resource to the ag community, um, which is why I am here with you guys today. I want to be a resource. I know that there is a lot of information and. Um, a lot of people probably calling you, you know, uh, trying to sell you advertising. Um, and there's just a lot going on in the marketing and advertising world. And so I, I would, I want to, uh, you know, extend this, you know, of me being a resource to you, um, so that you feel comfortable uh, asking questions and, um, you know, making the most out of your marketing budget and increasing the ROI in your business. Uh, I have been here for three years, like I said, and uh, I am uh, going to Pennsylvania in February to uh, another sustainable ag conference, and I'm very excited about that. Okay, so enough about me. We are here for you. Uh, our global, the global pandemic, which uh, happened, but is still essentially happening. Um, it definitely altered uh, how businesses operate uh, throughout all verticals. But today, of course, particularly, we're going to talk about ag. And um, during this time, you know, digital became very important uh, to all businesses. If they didn't have a website, uh, building a website became, you know, the most important task to accomplish. And uh, just in the entire world in general, we are moving to a very digital mindset. And so we're going to go over how that pandemic reshaped our tactics and our strategies. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, throughout this workshop, we can um, 
you know, uh, build something for you to start off with for 2022. We want to apply those strategies. And I wouldn't even say strategies, maybe just take one piece of information away from here, you know, that you think that you would like to focus on. And uh, we'll look at how those digital marketing strategies essentially can, you know, create those opportunities for you to act to increase your ROI. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off with farmers markets in particular. Uh, so one thing that I run into on a daily basis, I work with advertisers every single day. Um, and uh, there seems to always be a primary issue of people not having a budget set in place. So for each section today, uh, when we begin, we'll talk about um, what an annual marketing budget should look like for you. Uh, so this data um, is pulled from the IRS, the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, and the U.S. Census Bureau. And so we would be looking at an annual marketing budget for farmers markets of 0.2% of your retail sales. Uh, I'm sure something that you'll hear me continuously say throughout this workshop is it is, it is important to go into your marketing year with a plan. Um, you want to make sure that you allocate that budget, you stick with that budget, and then also take that budget and allocate it towards the highest possibility of converting, you know, and, you know, as you increase your ROI, of course, you increase those retail sales, and then your marketing budget increases the next year. So, it's um it's a great way it's a great first step to if you aren't already you know looking at um planning that budget ahead of time okay so uh Farmers market leaders say that they are interested in the following promotional tools um and so of course when we look at the top advertising media used uh, word of mouth from customers is always the best uh, way of advertising, and it is free. Um, and, you know, that uh, that falls back on you as, you know, giving them a good service or a good product and them, you know, wanting to come back, them wanting to share their experience with others. And uh, that word of mouth is priceless. And, you know, that kind of leads right into our using Facebook. So when we are using Facebook, um, it is, you know, one of the largest uh, social media platforms, if not the largest. And there's a lot of great ways for people to share that word of mouth with others by using Facebook. So when we dive down into the, you know, the social media realm, um, utilizing, uh, tagging people, uh, you know, posting content that is educational that people want to read. I know that uh, if you have a Facebook page, um, what is better than getting more people to follow you um, or to like your page? That is essentially um, a very, you know, uh, easy, efficient way of spreading your uh, message out there and getting more eyeballs. Um, Next on the list is offering coupons. Uh, I know that this is always a conversation um, in everywhere around the country. Um, you know, people still have newspapers, uh, magazines. They're sell. They're sending out uh, print mail. You know, in your mailbox, which I'm pretty sure all of us are guilty of not even looking at most of it and throwing it away. But if you are somebody that uh, you know is offering coupons, um, how can we apply that to a digital mindset? Well, the first way that we can do so is by putting an offer into your ad, right? So essentially, um, the coupon is saying, hey, you know, our uh, our products are 20% off uh, for the first two hours of a farmer's market, or, you know, um, maybe just one product in particular. Uh, another good way to apply the offering coupons portion of, you know, that marketing tactic would be if you already have a website and you have a platform where people are able to order 
Um, that's another great way for you to be able to put, you know, a discount in there at that time so that people don't have to print out anything or bring anything, but they maybe click on your ad or they see your ad and they visit your website. And that, uh, you know, that's, that increases your website traffic and uh, hopefully increases your sales. And then, of course, keep people coming back to your website keep people, you know, coming um, back to you to buy their products. The next on the list is other social media. So it's essentially we would be looking at Instagram, right? And Instagram is a pretty good platform. Um, it, uh, it allows you to visually uh, interact with eyeballs. Um, you know, it, it's not very big for posting actual content. Um, other social media platforms that uh, we run into other businesses trying to use uh, Twitter, um, but a really big one is TikTok. Uh, we, I always strongly advise my clients not to participate in TikTok. Uh, the reason being is that um, it's not a safe place to uh, share your information, not your information, but your content. Uh there isn't enough, um, uh, you, your message could be put in there with inappropriate content as well, right? So there's no good way to make sure that it is a safe branding uh, measure. Um, I think that if you are utilizing uh, Facebook, um, that will probably be your best option. And then Instagram, if you'd like to use that as well, not saying that you shouldn't use any other social media platforms, um, just, uh, giving you, uh, a little food for thought on that. Uh, the last on the list, but definitely not the least are TV ads. And you're thinking, okay, we're talking about digital marketing. Why are we going to talk about TV ads? Well, Digital has come very, very far, uh, even in the last three years since I've been here. And uh, I'm pretty sure most of us stream content on our smart TVs using uh, your Samsung TV, watching uh, shows on Pluto TV, or um, using your Roku, uh, Hulu, uh, Paramount Plus. Uh, these are streaming uh, services where people are still watching actual uh, TV or um, shows, long form shows, and they are still being served actual commercials. Um, now, why is this? Uh, why is why is this something that you should possibly consider? Not only are you you know capturing that audience that isn't watching those local TV stations, but you can also zip code target. You can target by demographic, by interests. So that's another uh, great way to uh, possibly reach an audience that maybe you haven't reached, especially if you've um, already played around with TV. I do also work with TV every day um, here at the station. And uh, it is always, um, you know, t broadcast. Our local TVs are still king uh, to all marketing because you can literally get, uh, you can reach an eye, a set of eyeballs for less than a penny. I, I mean, you can't get any better from that perspective of like a cost per um, person uh, to reach your message. But so moving on. Um, when we're looking at who we want to target, so uh, we might take different approaches to how we do that, right? So younger consumers uh, are responding to social media and also that paid search advertising. So that's your, your Google AdWords. You know, you go onto Google, you search for something, and uh, then these websites pop up, essentially ads, and they have the little blue box up there at the left that says ad. Um, people are paying for those for a reason. They come up at the top and, uh, you know, they are um, they are beneficial. They do drive very high conversion rates. Now, as I am talking about all of this information, one, if I'm speaking too fast, uh, please type it into the chat box and uh, Angie can let me know <laughs> to slow down. And two, uh, I know that there are a lot of uh, digital products that... Um, maybe not don't make a lot of sense. 
So uh, at the end of this workshop, I will have my contact information. If you ever want to, you know, just reach out and dive further into that conversation of what exactly all of these products are. Um, older consumers, uh, we want older consumers. Uh, if we're going to reach them, we want to look at email and uh, also social media, mainly Facebook. Uh, Facebook is uh, probably the best platform in general. We're kind of getting some of those younger consumers, but those there are a lot of older consumers utilizing Facebook as well. Um, and then of course, TV ads. Uh, people are still accessing their local news channels or watching their streaming television devices. So these are all very efficient ways um, to reach that audience. Okay, so we started with, hey, we're gonna set an annual marketing uh, budget, right? That 0.2%. And uh, then we looked at, you know, maybe what, what platform do we wanna use? Do we wanna look at social media first? Um, maybe let's just start with social media for uh, 2022. Now, uh, you know, I might, have a, I might have a limited budget. I might not have the largest budget or something that I really, really would feel happy to work with, but that's okay. Because when you start your digital marketing or any marketing strategy, it's best to be uh, very tactful on where you place those ads at. Um, we, remember, we want to uh, really narrow down that audience so that you can make the most out of your money, right? We want to increase that ROI. So, for instance, if you're a farmer's market that's open only one day a week, um, you probably don't want to advertise every day. Uh, people forget, especially events such as a farmer's market. Uh, people don't have a long retention uh, for remembering those dates. Um, and even not just a farmer's market. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, some of the government assistance programs and that kind of advertising uh, as well, um, people forget. So they make sure uh, not to advertise, uh, you know, too far out from the date of that people can apply because uh, people will forget. Um, so the best way to utilize your budget if you're open only one day a week is to advertise the day before or the day of. Uh, that will be when people say, hey, oh, I really want to go there. Um, I don't have anything planned for this weekend. Uh, if you are a farm that has, you know, you pick crops, uh, usually these uh, types of campaigns are uh, over a four to six week period of time uh, to when your crop is ready. And then if you are someone that's open year round, uh, you know, of course, a daily basis is probably preferred and of course in season. All right. So next into this is our target customers. Um, we want to increase your ROI. We want to target the people most likely to convert. Uh, that is the reason for you marketing. Um, so uh, we want to look at higher income, uh, those people that have disposable income that are guaranteed to continue to come to buy from you. Uh, the next on the list is college educated. Again, they probably, uh, you know, had graduated college and um, have that job that has a higher household income. Um, that is just something out of the data that says, hey, uh, these are great. Um, these are great targets for you to go after that are most likely to convert as customers. Uh, the last on the list are gardeners. So <clears throat> why would we want to target these people if you if you haven't uh, already thought about it yet? Um, they tend to be older, the higher household income, and they have access to vehicles and uh, that makes people more readily available to buy your products. Uh, when we get a little bit further uh, in, we will also talk about another way as well to, you know, of course, make that uh, your product available for, um, you know, lower uh, income uh, 
people as well. So uh, the next on the list, you know, we've we've chosen a target customer. We've chosen higher income. Okay, let's say that we wanted to target household income of a hundred thousand plus. And then we also said, hey, let's make let's make them thirty five years or older, and they own a vehicle. Now maybe you are in uh, <clears throat> a, an area that has a large population. Well, again, we have a budget that we set. We have chosen a day that we want to advertise, or a week, or a month, and then we've you know chosen this demographic. But what's next? What's next to narrow down that budget for you? Uh, the next on the list would be geography. Now, digital marketing, that is what is fantastic about digital marketing, is that you can target by zip codes, counties, states, um, ever, anything you name it. There are even some products where you can literally draw a virtual offense around um, one address. Uh, I mean, it can get very, very specific. Uh, so, most customers are drawn from a five mile radius. 45% uh, of those farmers market shoppers travel no more than four miles to reach the locations. And then another 18% drive five to nine miles. So if you do have a smaller marketing budget, um, that is okay. We just want to narrow down that, um, that target and uh, you know, make sure that we spend your money the, the most efficient way possible. Okay, um, so we're gonna look at just opportunities. What's what's going on? What is data telling us? Uh, and these are just great, you know, little um, bits of information that um, I hope that you know you can take something out of this and uh, be able to apply it to your next um, year's marketing strategy. So, one uh, since COVID, uh, what happened? Um, you know, uh, grocery stores shut down. Uh, so what, what did small farmers have to start doing? They had to start uh, reaching out to consumers directly. Um, and so that's a great way to, you know, get started. Uh, now, if you take it into your hands and you say, hey, I'm going to be in charge of marketing my product. I'm going to be in charge of selling my product. That is a great way for you um, to start. You know, you are now your own spokesperson if you haven't been already. Also, if you are a part of a, you know, um, larger farmers market, um, it would be great to join forces, you know, to increase that foot traffic. Uh, you know, the more that you guys work together, uh, the better and stronger of a marketing strategy that you can build. Um, so an idea, an idea here, farmers markets that accept SNAP. Uh, so we just looked at, hey, you know, we want to target those higher household incomes. We want to, you know, we want to target within, you know, a five to nine mile radius. Uh, but I know I'm sure as all of you guys are here, uh, the sole purpose of your business. Well, I mean, of course, everyone wants to make money, but anybody that's in farming is obviously here to try to make food accessible um, for everybody. And a way that could potentially help with that is, of course, accepting SNAP. Um, makes, you know, putting yourself in a convenient location where maybe low income shoppers uh, or people that don't own vehicles, uh, maybe they can make their way to your farmer's market. The next idea, I am positive that probably everybody on this call has already considered this or is already doing this or was already doing this before 2020. But uh, if you have not, um, you know, 2020 was a great time, actually, for the uh, subscription box delivery services. Uh, I think that it caused a, a big spike in um, just your everyday consumer uh, finding um, an easier way to get their groceries. And uh, so if you haven't already considered this, I mean, it could be an option, just an idea. All right, so um, say that we do have some digital marketing going on, um, you know, whether it be Facebook, uh, you know, you're looking at putting ads on streaming TV. Of course, I do talk about digital a lot, but another important part is your content. What does your ad look like? What is the messaging? What is it telling people? So 
it's always best uh, when you, especially if you're posting a lot of content, right? You, you kind of stop getting ideas. The ideas are just not flowing anymore. So a great way is to look at national events. Um, so, you know, National Blueberry Month, hey, you know, have a blueberry themed ad, uh, you know, or content, picking blueberries, um, you know, and National Farmers Market Week. These are great ways for you to be able to apply this, uh, you know, into your marketing. And if you uh, Google national events, you will find so many of them uh, that you probably won't even be able to keep track. All right. And so last for this farmer's market, um, discovery questions to ask yourself, uh, you know, just to um, get ideas flowing. Um, do you offer entertainment at the market? Uh, people are, you know, always looking for an experience, especially now that 2020 has passed. Uh, people were stuck in the house and now they're ready to get out. They're ready to, you know, um, go further into uh, uh, events. The next would be, do you accept food stamps? Uh, again, we hit up that on top a little bit. And then uh, last but not least, if this applies to you, do you, you see value in featuring a different vendor each week in your promotional material? So again, um, you know, really, uh, you know, a pre um, coming together, uh, collaborating and um, joining forces at some point or, you know, at least uh, supporting each other. Do we have any questions? Hey, um, yeah, we do. We've got a couple of good ones. Um, OK, let me get back to that screen. Um, let's see. Uh, well, we had one from Mike Hansen who first wanted to make sure that I said hi to you. I guess you went to, you did a feature on his Piney Woods carrot cattle earlier in the year. <laughs> yes. Um, he has a question, but first came from uh, Michael Balcom and he wants to know what is considered an older con consumer these days. Like, is there... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do not shoot me anybody on this uh, chat when I give you an answer. I would say an older consumer these days would be uh, 35 plus. Um, you know, uh, really, uh, mainly the millennials are kind of getting into there, but uh, mainly, you know, millennials, Gen Zs would be our younger demographic. Uh, but 35 plus is usually what I look at. You know, those people uh, older, uh, you know, tend to maybe have already bought houses or, you know, have families, uh, that sort of thing. So it also just really depends on your specific, you know, target as well, because that can definitely mean different things for different people. Yeah, it's not personal, just demographic. <laughs> Um, so let's see. So Mike Hansen's question is that he um, he says uh, he's he's considered using a loyalty type deal, something like where if you share this unique code with your friends and family, they get a five percent off their first order, and you get five percent off your next order. Um, they don't have an online shop, and he wants to know if there are any standalone products that manage this type of deal. Um. So. You, you know, uh, something like that, if they can't order online, uh, that does, you know, pose a, a little bit of an issue. But, uh, you know, there are um, things like streaming television, right? That we call it connected TV or over the top television. Um, because, again, you know, you're getting that message out there. And those are very good messages, you know, um, to even be able to use to track that, uh, you know, it's not just from a code um entry perspective. But I would say that uh, there are tactics such as your streaming television. There is, you know, digital audio people that are, you know, listening to um, uh, streaming their music. Uh, there are some things that are out there that, uh, you know, um, can help churn that and get more eyeballs. Uh, and I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty good friends with Mike. Uh, overall. And uh, he actually does a really good job at, um, you know, sending out uh, newsletters and, um, you know, being active on social media. Um, so he definitely has that down. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's a good, 
That's a good idea. And there definitely are apps that you can attach to your sales platforms online and stuff that can track like loyalty points and things like that. But I don't know about if you don't have an online shop, how that would re really work. But um, so we have one more question from April. Um, let's see. Any advice for a farm in a low income community? Um, she accepts SNAP and the target income customers are 20 miles away. Um, I don't, I don't do farmers markets yet due to capabilities to transport at this time. So how can I bring customers in and get, oh, this, this could be a heavy question. How can I bring customers in and get my farm name out there, especially for the EBT customers? Okay. Um, so, uh, we want to look at people being able to drive 20 miles. Is that correct? Yeah, it seems like maybe she's just wondering how she can reach people when she is not in close proximity to them. Mm -hmm. Luckily, uh, again, digital marketing is fantastic for that. Um, you know, uh, I have a, I have an insurance. I mean, um, a, uh, uh, I have a campaign going right now where we're targeting, you know, how annual household income of ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars. And, um, you know, within a specific radius. Uh, so there are there's and then, of course, another, you know, great thing to look at is, um, you know, where those people are spending their time here in eastern North Carolina, for instance, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, rural areas that don't really have good Wi-Fi. And uh, so, the, you know, that has been that has posed, you know, an, um, an issue for marketing efforts um, sometimes, especially with digital uh, but another great way to uh, look at that is any sort of digital marketing that is accessible on people's phones, um, mm -hmm. because uh, we do tend to see um, just in in the advertising world, um, especially, you know, uh, CBS affiliates, Fox affiliates, uh, all of, uh, you know, our major affiliates uh, tend to usually have a higher household income. Uh, that are, you know, watching the news live every day. Um, that's just, you know, something that we see on average. Um, but again, um, the CW, uh, we tend to have, you know, that younger audience, those people that are uh, looking at um, that, that content. Uh, that's mm -hmm. just what we see. Does that help? Like, yeah, I think so. Samantha responded her to, to her too, saying that she started sending a weekly email during COVID and she thinks that made a huge difference in connecting. So, but yeah, that's, um, that's it for questions right now. So, um, okay, perfect. You need anything else for me before I pop off? Um, so, uh, I see that, man, I can talk and I can talk and I can talk. Um, <laughs> what was the next biggest, uh, was it live produce wholesale? Was that our next one? That um, was... actually, actually, it looks like now with sort of updated, um, there's 50% other now. And then farmers markets and livestock dealers are the next two largest with um, with um, produce fresh and merchant wholesalers as second, as, you know, sort of the second. Okay. Um, behind that. All right. So poll question number two, uh, how do, how do most of our viewers uh, plan their marketing budget? So that one we've got, we've got a tie for first 37% each for no set plan and no marketing budget. And then, um, and then a tie for second for um, 12 and a half percent annually and 12 and a half percent quarterly. Okay, great. So, um, I would uh, I would very much challenge you uh, to you know really look at your retail sales and to uh, work on setting an annual marketing budget. Um, I really don't think you'll be disappointed. And if you are already spending money, uh, you know uh, here and there and here and there, um, it'll add up. You know, and then you might you know actually uh, have not made any money. You might have lost money. So uh, I would challenge everybody, um, if you aren't already, to uh, figure out um, what an annual marketing budget looks like for you. 
Uh, and again, I am a resource. So my contact information will be at the end and you're always welcome to reach out to me any way that you'd like. Um, you know, if you, if you need any help with that. All right. So, uh, so that I can get through here a little bit faster, but not too fast. Uh, we'll look at an annual marketing budget for produce, fresh merchant wholesalers. Uh, remember, this is uh, data from the IRS, U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis and the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, we'd be looking at 0.9% of retail sales. Um, so top advertising media being used. Uh, so on this side, we're looking at that business to business sales. And that's always uh, a very um, tricky and it almost uh, it seems complicated, you know, uh, if you haven't done it before. How are you going to advertise to those businesses? Well, something that we saw is especially in COVID was, you know, um, your your partners uh, that you were selling to, uh, they closed down maybe you know, especially restaurants, uh, schools. So um, how can we make that uh, marketing for you more robust so that you have more options? You know, we, we want you to have more options uh, so that, you know, you don't ever feel like it's a do or die situation. So what top areas of marketing uh, were there spent in 2021, this year? Uh, the first... Um, and the first was website development. Of course, you know, uh, last year, a lot of people probably realized like, oh man, everyone needs to come to my website now. How, you know, I need to make, I need to make this better. It needs improvements. So that was, that has been a big one this year. Uh, the second, of course, digital marketing. Um, that is a huge umbrella term for all the different types of digital marketing. Um, but that was a big one. Everyone was at home, right? Everybody was on their phones, on their tablets, on their computers. And a lot of people still are, um, you know, some people haven't gone back to work. So there's, and as everybody knows, um, that might not change, you know, that, that whole, uh, trend of, uh, people having to go into work. Um, people have been quitting their jobs, uh, to find us, you know, a work, at home position. So um, there are going to continue to be people that are uh, constantly using their uh, media at home because I definitely know I'm on my phone more at home watching my TV than I am at work. Uh, so next on the list of 33% was content marketing. Um, another thing that I'm very passionate about is educating, educating the public. Um, that is a very important part of agriculture, especially. Uh, we want people to trust us. Next on the list, social media, uh, including paid. Uh, another one, email marketing. And email marketing can be paid or free if you're collecting those emails, right? And then last but not least, trade shows and events. We still have this digital. We are on this conference right now digitally. We do have, you know, the trade shows. So um, that's still something that has been considered, but it definitely did drop down on the list uh, given our, you know, uh, new uh, realm of uh, digital that we live in. So again, uh, you know, pick one of these. If you are somebody that was already, you know, selling to specialty food retailers, uh, maybe let's look at expanding into restaurants. A great thing, again, about digital marketing is the uh, the targeting is uh, whatever you can dream of. It's probably there. I can target uh, job titles in specific, you know, uh, industries, in restaurants, in schools, uh, especially email marketing. Email marketing is really good for being able to target uh, specific job titles that are, work in specific industries. Um, and also, uh, so, you know, cafeterias and healthcare facilities, specialty food retailers, and we're looking at customers being drawn from a 250 mile radius, uh, usually. Uh, so, um, a few things here, uh, produce is, you know, continuing to represent the grocery share of fresh, uh, that is not going to change and it is increasing, um, an idea on that. Why is it increasing? Well, we have, you know, right now, uh, this is a very, uh, big time for our country and 
we have a lot of new arrivals from other cultures uh, showing up here. And so, you know, that can also be, you know, a way for you maybe to expand your produce offerings, uh, you know, taking that cultural side into consideration of who's coming here and maybe what they would like to see uh, as, you know, available to them. Again, potential national event tie-ins. These are great. Family Meal Month, uh, National National Culinary Arts Month. Um, again, something to uh, look, you know, err on the side of caution. Um, we are having, you know, issues with distribution and also, um, you know, most grocery stores right now are, uh, you know, showing um, a more narrow assortment of organic produce. So, that's something to take in consideration. And um, uh, discovery questions. So what portion of your business depends on the restaurant trade? Do you see value in promoting locally sourced organic produce items? And uh, do you offer buyers the opportunity to view, view your products virtually? Again, 2020, 2021, people aren't leaving their house. Uh, people want it to be easily accessible. So uh, virtual has become our new thing. Uh, in this world. All right, so poll question number three, do you collect emails from current clients? What did we see on here for this one? Uh, we have um, 62% said yes and 37% said no. Great, great. Uh, why do I ask this question? Um, collecting emails from your customers, from your clients, is the easiest way to apply email marketing, right? And it can be free email marketing. What's better? Then, of course, already being able to send out to that list of customers that you already have. Um, they're, again, word of mouth, free. Collecting emails, sending out a blast email on your own, free. So um, that's always important. Another great thing, um, another thing to keep in mind when you're doing those emails is, you know, people do want to see you consistently. Uh, people forget. Um, so, you know, make sure that, you know, uh, once a week is a great amount uh, for that. Once a week is great, I would say, um, you know, maybe even two times a month, depending on, you know, on, on what season you're in, maybe. Um, but, you know, definitely keep your name in front of those people. They already shot from you once. They will shop from you again. All right, so our next on the list is livestock dealers. We'd be looking at a 0.5% of retail sales. Uh, again, when we look at livestock dealers, that B2B side, you know, what has been a main focus for this year? Uh, digital marketing, of course, big umbrella though. And if you do want more information on all of the different types of digital marketing, please contact me. Um, website development, again, super important. Those trade shows and events still stay up there, uh, obviously, because that is a very um, uh, visual industry. And uh, email marketing and social media. So we are seeing a trend throughout all of these, uh, you know, all of these uh, slides that we've gone through is that website development was large, email marketing, social media. Um, and again, all of these um, allow you to target job titles, uh, you know, job descriptions um, in, the, in specific industries. So it's an easy way to make sure that you're making uh, the most out of your marketing budget. So target customers, uh, slaughterhouses, feedlots, ranchers who are looking to buy animals, packing house buyers. Um, I'm pretty sure I probably didn't even need to really tell you that. But the reason that I did put it in here is because we have the capabilities with digital to target these customers. Um, so, you know, there are there are opportunities for you to get in front of those customers without actually having to knock on their door or call them or, you know, them somehow magically find you. We can get your message in front of people. And most customers are drawn from a 500 mile radius. All right, so just a few opportunities. 
Um, U.S. exports, of course, uh, declined in the first half of 2020, but then we saw an increase. Um, an idea for you would be the use of video. Um, you know, uh, it benefits the producer, dealer, and buyer in terms of saving time. So that might be an option for you if you haven't already considered that. Again, you know, we're sticking with the digital theme, that virtual component. Uh, people want information fast. They want to be able to see the product and make that decision. Just like when you go anywhere on a website to buy something yourself, you know, if it's not easy to find, um, you probably click out of there and go look somewhere else for it. Uh, so, you know, being very transparent. So that kind of leads right into the discovery questions. Do you show transparency? Um, at this time in our ag industry, uh, unfortunately, we have gotten to the point because of a few bad eggs where, you know, transparency of uh, how you treat your animals, how you transport them, um, that's important. Uh, do you use videos to promote available herds and animals? That could always be an idea if you haven't done that already. And then does your marketing message attract a younger clientele? Uh, the reason I say that is, you know, all of the older generations of farmers um, are, you know, uh, getting older and um, maybe, you know, their sons or their grandsons or, you know, nephews, or that was very, very sexist of me. And I do apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> women as well. So daughters, uh, nieces, uh, they are taking over. And, um, you know, it is important to be looking at uh, portraying that message to that younger clientele. Okay, so this is mainly for you. If you answered this question, um, what do you want to improve in your 2022 marketing strategy? Uh, the reason that I put this poll question in here is because I want you to choose one for 2022. Just one. You probably want all of them but I want you to just choose one. What was the largest uh, answer the, Hey, Emily, this is Rachel Clark from CFSA. Sorry, we're switching up oh, on hi. you. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna uh, a bunch of us today. So looking at the poll, the largest was get new customers, followed closely okay. both. There was a tie after that for second place of educate potential customers and launch seasonal campaigns. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you want new customers, uh, you know, the biggest, uh, the biggest way to do that, the most effective way to do that is by setting that marketing budget from an annual perspective, figuring out the best tactic, you know, the best audience and making sure that you are spending that marketing budget wisely. Because if you want new customers, um, you're going to need to branch out, right? Uh, so my my uh, my suggestion would be for you if you are new to marketing or you know still um, trying to even get the hang of it, uh, choose one to focus on. Um, there are so many things that we want to do with marketing, but if you focus on one, it makes it easier to decide what was working and what wasn't working. All right, so we're going to skip over poultry farms. Um, but if anybody wants this presentation, email me. I will be more than happy to share this with you. The last thing that I want to cover is advertising response. Now, this isn't, uh, you know, where are your customers responding to advertisements? So I just have a few, uh, a few here. So healthy organic shoppers. Um, the uh, the response, the advertising response, what did they ask? When have you last seen or heard an advertisement of this type that led you to take action? So uh, the green will be in the last 30 days and the gray will be in the last 12 months. So we can see that in the last 30 days, uh, healthy organic shoppers, um, you know, uh, took action by uh seen an ad on a social network. Uh, and then not far behind that, television. Of course, television is king. And so I can't even, you know, discredit television necessarily, even though I am more of a digital person. Uh, the next would be a sponsored search result. So people looking on Google, right? 
And then uh, right below that, not too far below that, though, would be your streaming television. That extension of the television, you know, that people are watching, um, you know, on, on cable. So uh, here are some great ways. If you believe that healthy organic shoppers are your, um, you know, your target, this is a great way to look more into that. The next one is healthy eating weight loss seekers. Uh, again, in the last 30 days, I would say that responding in the last 30 days is probably more important than in the last 12 months because we are going to be looking at, you know, allocating that marketing budget and making sure that we're trying to increase ROI for your specific um, events. Uh, television, ads on a social network, streaming television, emailed ad or newsletter. Uh, again, all great options. Um, you know, look at what is the most effective for you and also what fits into your marketing budget. And last but not least, farmers and ranchers. So um, television, add on a social network, sponsored search result like your Google and streaming television. We definitely are seeing a trend here with um, very, you know, appropriate uh, products that can help get your message out. Um, and then grocery store or supermarket customers. Again, we're seeing that trend. Television, sponsored search results like Google, add on a social network, email, uh, or streaming television. Hulu, Pluto TV. Okay, so last but not least, uh, and this is probably more for me than it is for you, uh, what is a platform of advertising that you would like to learn more about? Um, so looking here, it looks like social media is the most at 44.4%. Um, and then the second place again is a tie between Google AdWords and email. Okay, great. Okay, so do we have any questions? Um, let me see. Let me get back in the chat. And forgive me, Emily, have you... Have you, is this the first time you're taking questions or have you stopped and take, taken questions earlier? Um, so where did we stop? Uh, let's see. Um, it looks like uh, we don't have any more questions. Well, there you go. You were okay. incredibly thorough. Well, this is... I, I guess. <laughs> uh, if you guys would like to take down my email address, um, you're more than welcome to. You can message me through our, uh, our conference app. Uh, I'd be more than happy to connect with you there. Um, I do work at WNCT in Greenville, North Carolina. So you can also go to our website and probably find my picture and my name uh, as well and my contact information. So there's a lot of ways to find me. Um, I'd be more than happy to be a resource for you uh, anytime you need it. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. Sorry again about the um, charade of CFSA staff helping you out here today. Um, but this was great. I, I had three. I had three today. I mean... That just means you're our favorite. Um, we uh, so anyway, we we really appreciate your time. And everyone who joined us today, we appreciate all of your time. Thank you again to South Carolina Sayer for your sponsorship, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend.